Scientific innovation is not always front page news, but Per Lindstrand knows all about breaking new ground and dealing with the glare of the international media. Lindstrand currently holds all absolute world records for hot air ballooning in distance, duration and altitude. In 1987, he manufactured and piloted the balloon in which he and Richard Branson became the first people to cross the Atlantic using hot air. Though not without incident, the balloon ditched and both men had to be rescued from the sea. Can I say, I mean, I think, I mean it, what, what we should be, you know, I think, celebrating today is um, a magnificent achievement by, by pair. Undeterred by the dangers, they went even further four years later with the first hot air trans-Pacific crossing, reaching unprecedented speeds of 245 miles an hour. And the technology behind these achievements was developed by Pear and his team in a quiet corner of Shropshire near Oswestry, Street, where he's been based since 1978. At the time, Britain was very cheap. The pounds crashed. Sweden was very expensive. It happened to be a factory available here by the Department of um, Industry at the time. But it was also good for me because I can test fly my balloons on my doorstep and plenty of good qualified labour in town. So uh, it turned out to be a successful location. And Pear's passion for all things inflatable has expanded here over the years. I came here to make hot air balloons and hot air airships. But gradually, as we developed skills, in particular in special shape manufacture, we realised we have skills that are usable in other sectors. And now we're doing solely teleaerostats, uh, gas airships, um, inflated buildings, and generally high-tech fabric engineering. People normally call us in when you have a mission impossible in fabric, and we never turn anybody down. The company now produces a wide array of products, from inflatable aircraft hangars and airships to tethered balloons or high flyers, designed for tourist hotspots. It is interesting here because we make different things all the time, different customers. Uh, I mean, this morning I spoke to customers in about six different countries. And some have a problem with the snake pit in Malaysia, and one has a problem with the high flyer in Niagara Falls. The whole company has a sort of atmosphere of innovation. People are really trying at all levels to come up with new ideas. So it is teamwork. Everybody is needed, every cog in this gearbox is needed. There's plenty of innovation in Lindstrand's lighter than air technology. We made a fabric that's nuclear proof, we made a fabric that can take sarin gas. We can make extremely strong fabric for radomes and, and tunnel plugs. So the strongest fabric we have over a length of one meter can lift about 40 tons. If you take a structure like this, inflatable building, this can take a wind speed of 80 knots. It behaves like a real building, but the amount of labor to manufacture this is far less than would it be a conventional building. It can be deflated in about 20 minutes this will fit him back in the state car and take him anywhere to, to reinflate again. The project currently on the shop floor is an AV projection dome. The AV dome is an interesting one. We can inflate that in hours. With the four cameras, you can have a complete 360 seamless picture. What's a bit unique with it is that you can be inside and outside of view it. So therefore, it has dual use. And that is a balance of the coating in the fabric. So half of the light gets caught on the inside, half goes through. And that took a bit of work to get that right, but that really is very, very effective now. With such an array of products, it's an exciting time for inflatable technology, with perhaps the only obstacle to future growth being some outdated misconceptions. I think the biggest problem we have is the bouncy castle image. People perceive fabric structure as something cheap and cheerful. It's not. We make structure for the most qualified requirements. We are fighting that, but it is turning the corner now. People accept fabric engineering as a permanent structure rather than as a temporary structure. At the moment, we're only turning probably 5% of our inquiries into, into business. I think if we're coming back in a couple of years' time, we're probably twice the size we are now. And Pear's numerous world record attempts have been crucial to the continued innovation at his company. If we don't push, we don't improve. I mean, the Pacific and the Atlantic crossing learned a lot about fabric engineering, about the technique, and to get a balloon burner to work at 35,000 feet for eight days, for example, that's not easy. And that then fed back to our everyday products. So, and we use the record flying as our testing ground. Great many people who have been made the industry has also been adventurous. And it's part of, I think, the 
spirit of go for it. Danger are there, but you gotta live with the danger. Don't step back. Rather stick out too much, get a slap occasionally, but not do anything at all. I think it's all part of the uh, the spirit you should have in the industry. I think there's too much caution in the industry today. So does he ever miss the thrill of those record-breaking balloon flights? Yes, I do, because a project is to engineer and build it is as fun as it is to fly. The project atmosphere, the spirit is fantastic. It cannot be repeated in anything else. But I haven't said I've done my last flight yet.